Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. I'm Jack Harrington, and today is another in our Tech A Day series. And today we're going to look at design tokens. So a design token is a, essentially a constant in your CSS system. So let's just say that your highlight color has a value of light blue. That constant highlight color can then be used in a bunch of different contexts. And then when you change highlight color to, I don't know, light green or whatever you want to change it to, it changes consistently everywhere. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to do this. In fact, we're going to look at not one, not two, not three, but four different ways to do this in CSS and React. So without further ado, let's jump into the code. Okay, so the first way that we're going to look at is probably the most straightforward. It's using CSS custom properties or, or variables. The only problem with this technique is it's not actually available in IE 11. So if that matters to you, then yeah, that's a thing. So let's go over and see how that's done. This project is available to you via GitHub, of course. You can check out the code link down in the description. It's got basically four folders in it. And the first one is CSS variables, which is what we're going to look at now. And there's two files in there, index.css and index.html. We'll serve those up. And wow, there you go. There's our little test pattern, the highlight panel. So this is the HTML for that. Pretty simple. You've got a div, class highlight panel, and then the interior text. And now over in the CSS, we define that highlight panel class. And instead of just directly saying that we want the border of a particular size and a particular color, we reference the variables. And this is how we do it. We say var, and then we give it the variable name. You can also give it a second argument, which is the default value if none is specified. So that's how you get that green down there when it comes to the background color. And then up on the root pseudo selector, you're actually going to define your values. So in this case, border color, we can change that to dark green, change the highlight color to light green, refresh the page, and now you've got a light green palette. So pretty simple stuff. All right, now let's go with a CSS preprocessor. For this, I'm going to use less. Same kind of idea. You've got a basic HTML page, exact same one. And there's an index.css, but that index.css is generated via build process from the index.less, which contains these variables, border size and highlight color. And then we're going to use some less macros to darken up that highlight color by 50%. And that's going to give us the border color. So that's how you do this in less. And those kind of verbs like darken are built into the framework. So that does that for you automatically. We're in the package.json. We can see that we need to build that. So let's run the serve just to see what it looks like now. And we will change that out to light blue. And we'll change that out to light green. And there you go. Rebuilt and looks great. All right. So another variation is to use CSS and JS. And now we're going to look at that two different ways. We're going to look at Linaria, which is a build time CSS and JS framework that has zero runtime. And then we're going to look at Emotion, which has a runtime. So let's start out with Linaria and Craco Linaria. Craco is a way of extending a Create React app. So in this case, I'm using the Craco Linaria plugin. And I've got my design tokens up at the top. And then I'm defining the highlight panel as a styled div tag with the border and the highlight color. We're going to use a color library to do the darken for us. And this way, we only have to define a single value, which is quite nice for the color, just the same way that we did less. And now we're going to fire it up. And you can see it's light blue now. So let's go make that change over to light green, and there you go. Okay, and now let's head over to Emotion. Nice. So this is a Create React app. We've done nothing other than just create it and then add in Emotion. Didn't have to do any kind of extension to the build or anything like that. And it's pretty similar to Linaria, though in this case you basically just define some CSS, the class, and then you pass that as the class name into React. And in this case, again, we are using the color to darken it up. Everything else remains much the same. And of course, you can put those tokens anywhere. They obviously don't have to be in the same file. Let's fire that up. And now it's blue. And let's make that change to green. Hit save. And now it's now green. There you go. Now, what I haven't covered here is theming. 
And a lot of these frameworks support theming as part of that. So this is essentially theming. And if you're really serious, I would look into that. In addition, I'd also probably look at Material UI and how it does CSS because it's essentially a CSS and JS thing, but it's also got theming built into it, which is really great. All right, well, I hope you liked getting kind of a grand tour of design token type stuff in CSS and also in JS. If you like this video, just hit that like button. If you're a fan of these kind of videos in general, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, you can always hit that bell and you'll get notified when any new videos come up. And in the meantime, be happy, be healthy, be safe, and stay inside.